Television shows and movies often feature people wiping their fingerprints off surfaces like tabletops, steering wheels, doorknobs, and guns. Basically anything that they may have touched to avoid being identified by the investigators. However, is wiping a surface enough to ensure that fingerprints can't be pulled? Humans develop fingerprints long before we are born, and they stay with us throughout our life. Those grooves and ridges on our fingertips not only improve our touch perception and ability to grip things, but also provide us with a completely distinctive identification mark. Every single person has a unique set of fingerprints. Not even identical twins with the same DNA code share the same prints. This peculiar property of friction ridge impression, commonly known as fingerprints, has been a part of crime solving for over 100 years. So, how do we end up leaving fingerprints on things we touch? Even if your fingerprints are not soiled by blood, dirt, or Cheeto dust, they will still leave behind chemical imprints on things that you touch, because the sebaceous glands under our skin secrete a cocktail of sweat, oils, and amino acids. This phrase is known as the exchange principle, and forms one of the basic principles of forensic science. It was popularized by Edmund Locard, one of the pioneers in the field of forensics, who showed that every time two objects came in contact with each other, there was an exchange of material between them. At this point, you might be wondering how fingerprints are lifted from a crime scene. Well, crime scene investigators, CSIs, look for three different types of fingerprints, patent, plastic, and latent. Patent fingerprints are visible to the naked eye, for instance, if a finger was soaked in blood. Plastic fingerprints are those left on soft surfaces like soft wax or wet paint. And latent fingerprints are the invisible impressions created by skin secretions on various surfaces. Investigators usually begin with patent fingerprints because they're usually visible under normal light and UV black light. Then they look for plastic fingerprints left on soft surfaces. These can be lifted off by pouring a liquid into them, such as plaster, molten alloys, or silicon rubber, which can later harden and create an impression of the print. Finally, there comes the most challenging part the hunt for lifting latent fingerprints. Since these are invisible or barely visible, CSIs must use chemistry to enhance such prints, if any exist. The most common technique, and the one many of us have likely seen on TV, is the use of fingerprinting powder. CSIs use their trusty brush and a palette of fingerprint powders to visualize prints from both smooth and textured surfaces. The fingerprint dusting powders stick to oils and moisture left by the ridges on our finger trips, and create a visible print that can then be lifted off using transparent tape. The powders they use vary from surface to surface. For example, aluminum powders are preferred for glass surfaces and brass, whereas granulated jet black powder is used on silvery surfaces to create better contrast. Fluorescent powders are used to enhance prints on multicolored surfaces. For porous surfaces like paper or walls, fingerprints are detected by spraying a solution called ninhydrin on the surface where a print may be found. This ninhydrin solution reacts with amino acids present in sweat and turns purple due to the formation of Ruhemin's purple. In some cases, CSIs will also use cyanoacrylate or superglue fumes to enhance a latent fingerprint from a rough surface. The cyanoacrylate molecules react with skin residue and polymerize to create a 3D matrix of the fingerprint. If the CSIs still have no luck, they can try the most recent and advanced method, vacuum metal deposition or VMD. This method deposits a thin layer of gold and zinc on the site in question. Part of the gold layer diffuses with the skin oils, while the rest remains free. When the zinc is coated, it attaches itself to the undiffused free gold, thus creating a negative contrast of the fingerprint. Though quite expensive, this is one of the fastest methods for developing a fingerprint on extremely tricky surfaces like wood or fabric. Now, let's circle back to the common movie trope of an actor wiping their fingerprints off a gun. It seems like a simple wipe with a cloth eliminates any trace of a criminal's guilt, but that isn't actually the case. Scientists have developed a method that can visualize prints from even the faintest fingerprint deposits left after the metal of a gun is wiped off. This technique uses a colored, electroactive film that uses fingerprint residues as a stencil for blocking the electric current. Once a voltage is passed through, the oily regions deflect the colored substances surrounding bare regions, which give rise to a negative ridge pattern, similar to the VMD method. There's also the bullet casing to consider. Scientists can now identify who handled the bullet before it fired by visualizing corrosion on the brass casing. The oil or sweat marks left by a finger ridge can cause the brass casing to corrode, 
which is further accelerated by the heat produced while firing the bullet. Thus, scientists coat the casing with a conducting powder and pass an electric current through it. The powder moves and sticks to the corroded spots, and voila, we have a fingerprint. There have been many phenomenal advances in forensic technology, so unfortunately, the days of wiping down weapons to remove fingerprints will soon be a myth from a bygone era. Eventually, movie makers will also have to do away with criminals wiping their fingerprints off surfaces to escape detection. <laughs>